فانا هحاول او جاوب على ثلاث اسئله في السيرجيكال مانجمنت اوف تيوب اوفيرين ابسس واي وين اند هاو اي هاف نو كونفليكت اوف انترست ريجاردنج ذيس توبيك اند از ماي يعني ماي سينيور كوليج دكتور محمد علام هاز جوست سيد هي سبوك اباوت بي اي دي ماي بي اي دي I'm speaking about another entity, which is abscess. So this is, by definition, severe pelvic inflammatory disease. So it's an abscess, horragia, يعني mass, the fallopian tubes with ovaries. Sometimes it involves also adjacent organs. Not sometimes, almost always. حابب أذكر حضراتكم إن this is a serious condition. وفي ناس بتموت من التوب ovarian abscess. It's a serious, life-threatening complication of PID. So, one third of the patients who have PID might have tubo ovarian abscess. It needs a clinical suspicion, taban, لانه كمان ال patients who have endometriosis are ten times more liable to have tubo ovarian abscess. I've recently published a paper. I'm honored, يعني, if I send it to the group, taban, about acute pain. In, gyne in a non-pregnant endometriosis woman, it's not always a dysmenorrhea, okay? علشان بعض ال patients بتوع الاندومتريوزس بيجيلهم pain ويبقى pain جامد وتروح ال AND أو ال casualty أو whatever بس احنا عارفين ان هي عندها endometriosis فبناخد الموضوع lightly ومش بندخل فيه in depth. أحب أذكر حضراتكم إنه ال patient اللي عندها endometriosis خصوصا لو deep endometriosis وجالها tube ovarian abscess, this is a serious problem ولو عملنا لها سيرجري this is a very complex surgery بتاعة the most senior surgeon in the team بنشخص ازاي uh, clinical suspicion is the most important thing imaging is very important وزي ما حضراتكم شايفين بالultrasound it's not a difficult diagnosis we can see an abscess we can see a cavity full of pus uh, ultrasound is very important حتى لو عندك CT أو MRI ultrasound زي ما حضراتكم شايفين بتوريني السيستا او الابسس دي فين من الالترا ساوند بروب بتاعي واذا كنت اقدر اعمل لها الترا ساوند جايدد درينج او لا والاكولوسنسي بتاعه الماتيريال او الفلويد اللي جواها هينفع نقدر نسحبه ولا هو اوريدي كواجيليتد وتخين وثيك ومش هنقدر نسحبه فبالتالي نوفر على البيشنت ريسك لانه الالترا ساوند او الايمج جايدد درينج كان اولسو هاف ريسك CT scan is useful if you can afford it, if your hospital can help you with this. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's useful. Last patient I have operated from a situation, for a situation like this was during the night, uh, two o'clock or something like this. And because the CT scan was very clever in showing that the, the abscess is completely fused with the bowel and with the appendix, I preventively asked my colorectal surgeon colleague to come and give me a hand. And I will show you why colorectal surgeon colleague can be very, very important in such situations, okay? Uh, according to the European guidelines for PID, because I was sure, almost certain, that Dr. Alam will show the British ones, I'm just showing the European ones as well. So uh, mm, the situation is you can treat this patient either medically, completely medically, medically then drainage, or surgically. يبقى هم ثلاث ثلاثة كاتيجوريز احنا بنبدا ميديكال ماشى كويس وامورنا بالفولو اب ماشى كويس هنكونتينيو حسينا انه في الامور مش ماشيه كويس قوي هنعمل ممكن نعمل الترا ساوند او ام ايمج جايدد درينج وات ايفر ات از ما مشيش او حسينا انه الدرينج مش هيبقى كويس فور ذيس بيشنت از وي ويل سي ناو هنعمل على طول عمليه هنعمل لها سيرج تمام زي ما حضراتكم شايفين من الجايد لاينز از انكلير ما نقدرش نبريدكت من الاول كده ونقول اول ست دي هتمشي كويس كذا وهت... الا في بعض الحالات اللي هنشوفها دلوقتي احنا. الانتيبايوتكس بتفرق بتبقى كويسه اه اب تو 87% اوف ومن اوف تيوب اوفيريان ابسس بينفيت فروم هوسبيتال ادميشن اي في انتيبايوتكس اند اوبزرفيشن يبقى دي الحاله اللي احنا حاجزينها في المستشفى وبنديها اي في انتيبايوتكس وعامل لها observation from 34 to 87% of them are okay ليه بقول الكلام ده لان الكاونسلنج بتاع البيشنت مهم علشان تبقى عارفه وكل ما البيشنت كانت يونج وكل ما البيشنت كانت surgically complex 
لازم تبقى فاهم ان هي قاعده في المستشفى فور ان ايفنتواليتي مش بس علشان تاخد انتي بايوتكس عشان تاخد انتي بايوتكس واحنا كيبينج ا فيري كلوز اي اون هير اف شي ديتيريوريتس او الامور ما مشيتش كويس ويل دو سيرجري زي ما حضراتكم شايفين ان اكسبرت هاندز وانا بحط 30 خط تحت اكسبرت هاندز زي ما الدكتور علام قال هو ما عندوش الجاينيكولوجي الاكسبرت في الالترا ساوند سو هي سينز ذا بيشنت تو ذا راديولوجي ديبارتمنت ليه؟ لان هم ذي ار ايبل اوف درينج اند ليفنج ا درين انسايد اوكي؟ يعني مش علشان انا بعمل الترا ساوند جاينيكولوجيكال الترا ساوند ترانسفيجن الترا ساوند فور ا ريزون اور انذر فور اي في اف اور فور اني اذر ريزون اقول نو 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 اي ويل جو دي سهله خالص دي زي سحب البيضه اي ويل جو وذ نيدل درين دي ابسس اند ذاتس ات ات از نوت ات اوكي بعد كده لما بنعمل جراحه الجراحه فيري فيري كومبلكس وهنشوف دلوقتي بالفيديوز لو احنا عندنا السكيلز بتاعت اللابروسكوبي لابروسكوبي از ماتش ماتش بيتر ماتش بيتر ذان لابروسكوبي لو عن ما عندناش السكيلز مش عيب ابدا ان احنا نفتح الحاله لو عندنا السكيلز او ما عندناش السكيلز يعني الابروتش مش هيختلف الايم لو عندنا ديزيزد اورجن هنشيله ما عندناش هندرين الابسس ونسيب تو درينز ونغسل كويس قوي 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 ونطلع طيب ايه هو الموضوع زي ما حضراتكم شايفين يبقى في ادميشن وبارنترال ثيرابي اوبزرفيشن وفيردر انفستيجيشنز بن ايه بنقيم ايه بنقيم الكلينيكال ريسبونس اوف ذا بيشنت مش بس كلينيكالي عندها فيفر ولا لا فيري سنسيتيف ماركر اي ريسبكت ات فيري ماتش بصراحه هو السيري اكتيف بروتين وفي كمان البروكالسيتونين والوايت سيل سيل كاونت ما نفرحش قوي لو الوايت سيل كاونت نزل جامد العينين دول لو صغيرين في السن بيبقوا كويسين بس sometimes they decompensate very quickly والpatient بتدخل في septic shock quickly تمام uh, 25% of the patients respond well to antibiotic therapy طب ايه هي ال factors according to the European guidelines اللي ممكن تكون associated with the failure of conservative treatment if the patient is old age لو ال patient عندها I have recently operated a patient with a coil inside that has 11 years old it was 11 years old <laughs> inside if the abscess is big greater than 8 centimeters suspect in the medical treatment مش هيعمل شغل كويس if uh, her CRP level is very high يعني ال patient اللي بتكون بادية من levels of CRP very high and it's going up بنخاف منها او اللي يكون عندها very high leukocytic count زي ما بقول لحضراتكم زي ما حضراتكم عارفين يمكن احسن مني كمان انه The low leukocytic count هو حاجة تخوف ما تبسطش. The very low بيخوفنا ما يبسط ماش. The ultrasound guided زي ما حضراتكم شايفين this is an abscess that has more than a cavity. So if you uh, uh, expose your patient to a risk to drain it sonographically, either you're experienced or you have an experienced radiologist that can drain this, first of all can evaluate the feasibility of drainage, yes or not. Because it's very, very important not to trial and error. Why? Because trial and error can cause complications that can be dangerous to the patient. So an experienced radiologist who evaluates first, who uh, uh, evaluates that uh, uh, this patient is feasible for ultrasound drainage, and if feasible, he does the drainage. Why? Because there is a risk of rupture risk of infection, risk of injury to important structures like the bowel, for example. What are the limits for the image uh, or ultrasound or CT, whatever drainage? First of all is the experience, as we said before, interference of uh, uh, loops if the patient has severe infection. And what's more important in my eyes is uncertainty about diagnosis. If this patient is perimenopausal or postmenopausal and has a tube ovarian abscess, consider cancer. And uh, try to be as uh, 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 less uh, um, problematic as possible. So if she's not okay, do a surgery for her, remove what she has. It's much better than uh, perforating or puncturing with a, a, a needle. Indications for surgery, Fairy, failure to respond to medical treatment and with medical treatment failure, I think 48 hours is, is a good window to judge the patient. So you admit the patient, you uh, uh, start parenteral treatment with antibiotics and hydration. If the patient is responding well, which means that she's apyretic, uh, uh, apyrexial, 
she has uh, she the pain is improving crp is improving and all the inflammatory markers are improving if she has suspicion of rupture of the tube ovarian abscess if she is about to have septic shock if she has rupture uh, a suspicion of rupture of bowel perforation this is where we have to do surgery or if there is a doubt about the diagnosis particularly in perimenopausal age why we do surgery what are the pros the pros is that if we do it well and there are no complications the patient is good after surgery the patient is well uh, we have a uh, liquid and we use it for microbiological uh, microbiology if uh, there is a tumor or if there is an ovarian pathology as we will see now we remove it we remove the pathology and we have a, a pathological diagnosis and we then the cons obviously it's a complex surgery with risk of complications and this is how we do it as you can see here we need in this an an experienced team and not an experienced surgeon because surgery 8 to 20 percent of the patients might have serious complications especially bowel injury as you can see here the bowel is edematous the bowel is adherent and to uh, uh, mobilize the bowel the cases that the complications that I have seen or witnessed from these surgeries do not happen from the surgeon. If the surgeon is, and un, 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 uh, uh, because probably I have seen them uh, operated by uh, experienced surgeons, complex uh, complications if happen usually happen by the assistant. Because, because the assistant is mobilizing the bowel, the assistant can create you some problem. So it is a team, it's not only an experienced surgeon. We have, we aim to be as minimally invasive and as conservative as possible. So if it is an ovarian abscess, our aim, if, especially if the patient is young, is ovarian sparing. Laparoscopy is good, is the gold standard. But again, as we said, if you don't have the experience of the patient or if the patient is in septic shock, this is not uh, uh, what you should do. So uh, a retroperitoneal approach, I will just say it quickly, quickly, because this has been published and this is actually what we use. And I have uh, been taught, as Professor Maghrabi has just said, by uh, uh, very, I have been privileged to have very eminent teachers, either in Egypt or in Italy. Uh, uh, so they have taught me uh, these six golden rules. And if this is the only thing that you take home from this uh, presentation, I would be very, very happy. So the first golden rule is again and again and again, number one till 10, is experienced team. It's not a registrar job and we have to be humble in front of this. It's a team with a, an experienced surgeon and experienced assistant as well. The second is proper inspection of the pelvic organs and before you do anything, if there is a fluid, aspirate the fluid and send it to microbiology. This is a very precious fluid because sometimes this changes completely the scenario of treatment. If you have culture and sensitivity so that you give specific antibiotics, especially if the patient is critically unwell. Number three in the six golden rules is the bowel. The bowel, the bowel and the bowel. The bowel is fragile, the bowel is edematous. I will show you two videos now or three videos. Go with blunt dissection, blunt dissection, and ask your assistant not to hold the bowel, but to do you counter traction by pressure on the bowel with very, very gen gentle traction. And this is another important thing that my teachers taught me is to move on a fixed surface. I will show you how. You have fixed surfaces in the pelvis, either, either on the uh, ovarian fossa or the back of the uterus. These are the areas where you move on them. You can, there is no harm. You will, not, you will not cause a problem, okay? And number five is uh, in case of adnexectomy, if you are doing salpingo-ophorectomy, remember the retroperitoneal approach and remember this organ, ureter, ureter, and ureter, especially if the patient has endometriosis. Uh, a very importantly, in laparoscopy, we use energy devices. And uh, uh, as you know, even the most advanced energy devices, multifunctional devices, are declared to coagulate uh, vessels up to seven millimeters. So even if, if this is a three millimeter vessel, but it is surrounded by a tissue which is edematous, which is inflamed, and you use the bipolar, 
the efficacy of the bipolar to coagulate here is not like normal tissue. So give yourself some time. If you cut the infundibulopelvic ligament, if you usually coagulate once at one level, here coagulate once and move and coagulate again. Coagulation here, remember that you have to prepare the pedicle better because it's surrounded by edematous tissue. And if you coagulate and secure hemostasis, coagulate better. This is an example of what I was saying to you, a, a young patient critically ill. And this is how the decision, the time of the decision is very, very important. And as you can see here, uh, I'm moving on the tube, trying to find the fixed surface. Now mobilize the bowel. I will ask my assistant to hold the appendices epiploica or to put the instrument on the bowel, not to move it, not to hold it. Find the tube. We move on the tube. Don't do any traction. Don't touch the bowel. It will move alone. Found the liquid. This is very, very precious, as we said. Aspiration and microbiology. And then again, this is a young patient. And look to the tissues, how uh, uh, edematous and how destroyed, let's say, they are. In this context, you cannot find the ovary, but now we are moving on the fixed surface, which is the ovarian fossa. It's peritoneum. We know that we are intraperitoneal. We have no problems at all. Move there. And now, you, in most of these cases, it's better to do a retrograde salpingectomy, which means that you start proximally and move distally. And then here, Remember, tissues are edematous. Use the bipolar, uh, uh, prepare your pedicles and use the bipolar in a different way. Here, you can also use this dissection, blunt dissection. There are many things that are disposable and uh, help you with this. Use a uterine manipulator if you can, because this helps you to make counter traction. When you start seeing pus, collect the pus, the liquid. Take it for microbiology. And now look here. We, the bowel is away from our field. We will go to the first fixed surface that we will find, which is the back of the uterus. Found the point, move around the point. Worst case scenario, you will have a little bit of bleeding from the fixed surface, which is the back of the uterus. No problem at all. Walk, move here, do blunt dissection, find the plane of cleavage, and you always find. But this patient had deep infiltrating endometriosis of the bowel, as you can see here. And she is 45, 46, something like this. And she has comorbidities. So we decided to take, as you can see here, this is deep infiltrating endometriosis. So we decided to take the adnex out. It's a salpingo oophorectomy. Fine. Now we have seen everything before cutting the IP ligament here. It's very, very thick, and we know this. We leave some goes inside, and we start the salpingectomy. Retrograde, we coagulate well. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Okay. And we open the retroperitoneum. This is something that if you don't have the skill to do it, don't do it. But if you have it, please do it in this case before cutting and having the surprise that you cut or you coagulated the ureter. There are simple rules to work in the retroperitoneum, and I'm very happy to give a presentation on this if the Professor Maghrabi gives me the chance to do this about retroperitoneal surgery. This is the ureter. We have seen it. We understood where it is. Now we are very safe because it's usually very medialized in endometriosis patients. We dissected the IP ligament. We look how thin it is. We coagulated on two, three points. And now we are cutting it because if it's edematous, we coagulate it quickly and then it retracts in the retroperitoneum. This is not a good situation that you can find yourself at. Last but not least, as we said, again, patients with endometriosis might have... Uh, uh, might have uh, uh, infection and they are 10 times more liable. If you look here, you find that the, the cyst is completely fused with the bowel. No worries. You just penetrate the cyst in a, a sensible point and do the suction. 
and then find the plane of cleavage, detect the cyst, detach the cyst from the uh, uh, bowel, as you can see here. And here also we decided to remove and not only to uh, uh, to drain, and we uh, selected the retroperitoneal approach, and we detach it completely the bowel and then remove the end next. So take home messages. I think that you agree with me that tube ovarian abscess is a serious and potentially life-threatening condition. Prompt diagnosis, early treatment can reduce complications. And what I mean by early treatment is that open your eyes. If you decide to do something, it's better to do it uh, timed, uh, it, it make a timed decision rather than waiting and waiting and waiting. And then the complication gets, the situation gets more complicated. Medical treatment alone can work. Medical treatment and drainage by experienced hands can work up to 80 sometimes 100% of the cases, and uh, could be enough. But the patient, you have uh, keeping an eye on the patient. Uh, if uh, uh, the patient needs surgery, do her surgery as minimally invasive as possible if you have the skills to do this by experienced team and not only experienced surgeon. Ovarian sparing surgery with young patients, uh, if this is possible. And uh, last but not least, uh, Remember the six golden rules and thank you very much for your attention.